Now we all know that a boxer needs endurance, we need agility, we need speed and strength even to a certain extent. But if there is one attribute that is the hottest topic right now in the community of boxing and the most sought after, it would be that of punching power. And this is for a very good reason. Throughout the history of boxing, it has always been the power punchers that are the most feared. It may even be argued that this is more nerve-wracking than facing an opponent with superior skill. Now for some very strange reason, it has always been assumed that punching power is genetic, that you either have it or you don't. Now I don't believe that this is the right way to put it, because it is not a matter of either having it or not having it. With this reasoning, what is the point of doing anything at all? Because every single mental or physical attribute we have, that's also a result of genetics. Should we refrain from improving them as well? No, when people throw around the sentence, punching power is genetic, what they are probably unconsciously referring to is this. Your potential for punching power is determined by your genes. But guess what? Endurance has a genetic ceiling as well, so does strength, flexibility and all other athletic factors. Does that mean that the powerlifter should not do strength training? Or that the marathon runner should not do endurance training? You get my point. We are now going to discuss the main findings of a very significant and dare I even say revolutionary study where elite boxers were given a training intervention of 16 weeks designed to improve their punching power. Now this study is very special for two main reasons. Number one, the subjects they were elite boxers, the Korean national team, meaning that they were already fit and experienced, they have good punching power technique and all of that. A lot of studies that measure power production, they will often take unfit or beginner athletes and those athletes they have a very high margin for improvement, so the results are not always reliable and universal when it comes to those. And reason number two is that punching power was actually measured before and after the training intervention. Surprise, right? But oftentimes studies of this fashion, they just measure jumping ability or do some sort of a lift and attribute that to boxing specific power. This study actually measured the most relevant parameter, punching itself. So their main goal with this training intervention was to emphasize movements that occur in boxing, obviously. So they did this in a circuit training format with different kinds of methods that emphasize different boxing aspects in each session. And the program lasted for 16 weeks and it was performed in three parts, all in the same day, divided into morning and afternoon. So the first part of the training, which was performed in the morning, consisted of circuit training. This included Olympic lifting variations such as the jerk, compound strength exercises such as the squat and the deadlift, and then we had more accessory, isolated lifts such as the back extension, the leg extension and incline sit-ups. And lastly, the circuit contains sport specific elements like dumbbell punching, shadow boxing and the jump rope. This circuit was performed three times per week. And each strength exercise was performed for three sets of 8 to 10 repetitions at intensities varying between 50 to 70% of their one repetition maximum. Once they had completed all of the exercises within the circuit, this constituted as one set, and they would rest 7 minutes between sets. The medicine ball drills included rotational twists, you had ball lunges, chest passes, and after that you had some form of banded plyometrics and boxing specific drills with resistance bands, which included straight punches and hooks. The bands consisted of light, medium and heavy resistances and the balls they varied between 3 to 5 kilograms and this would be increased throughout the weeks in terms of resistance and repetitions performed. This was also performed 3 times per week. And finally the third part consisted of power shuttle runs. This was performed directly after the medicine ball and the resistance band training in the afternoon. Each round of the shuttle runs consisted of multiple short sprints and direction changes with a total activity time of 190 seconds and it was performed for 3 rounds with a rest period of 1 minute per round. This was performed 2 times per week. Now the punching power itself was measured before, in the middle and after the training program. And this was measured with the help of a sensor on a dummy that measured the force in G units. And here are the results of the study. And as you can see, the straight punches and the hooks, they improved significantly in terms of G-forces. Now this might actually be, in my experience, the first time we actually have on paper, like, someone that measured punching before and after a training intervention, and it works. 
And keep in mind that the boxers in this study, they are on the elite level. They are Korean national team boxers, like they know their punching technique. So their improvement was in all likelihood a result of physical adaptation. Now there was nothing wrong with the exercise selection at all in this study. All of the methods that they used, they are scientifically proven. They included compound strength exercises for force production. They included medicine ball training, ballistic training, sprinting. Those are proven and research methods for power production. However, in this study, they weirdly enough chose a circuit training format, which means that you will in all likelihood be significantly fatigued when you move on to the next station. Power is most optimally developed in a non-fatigue state, because your creatine stores need to recover. So if they had addressed this issue with the training program, it is my hypothesis that they would have been even better result-wise. But despite those shortcomings, they came across a very valuable finding that punching power can in fact be improved by a proper training intervention.